Warner Brothers Movie World is the premier amusement park in Australia for thrill seekers. This park gets a lot of attention in the coaster community for DC rivals, and rightfully so, but this park has a lot more to offer. While they have the same intellectual properties as a Six Flags park, their level of theming is superior and several major rides use this to their advantage. While this park doesn't have a massive amount of rides, it's quality over quantity here. So in this video, I will rank this park's top 10 rides and attractions. Before starting the countdown, I need to note this list will only include the attractions I was able to experience in my one visit to the park. This occurred in early 2023, and there unfortunately were quite a few rides closed. The most notable of the bunch was the Scooby-Doo Spooky Coaster. This mock wild mouse looks to have an incredible dark ride section at the start, with scenes straight from the live action film. Then the coaster section starts with a surprise, before going into the usual series of hairpin turns and dips. This coaster wasn't supposed to be closed when we originally booked our trip, but it suddenly closed for a multi-million dollar renovation, so maybe I'll get to experience it one day. The park's best two flat rides were also closed. First was Doomsday Destroyer. This intimate inverting pendulum looks really cool. I suspect this ride would have offered great hang time, but it seems to be extremely prone to downtime from what I've gathered. Second is Batwing Space Shot. This is a 20-story tall SNS drop tower. It looks to be one of the stronger space shots, but the ride had its maintenance extended an extra week, causing me to miss it. Finally, this list may look quite different in the near future as the park has three more coasters on the way. There's two Vacoma family coasters coming in 2024 with the Wizard of Oz area. One will be a clone of Orcana at Faroop Summerland. This is a great option for all ages as has a shockingly forceful start, followed by some fun turns and helixes. Two will be a dueling family boomerang that's a clone of Twist Ride at Wildlands Adventure Zoo. I haven't been on that one, but I've heard it's a solid ride. The third will be Wet n Wild's former surf rider coaster. This intimate halfpipe is strongly rumored to be placed smack dab in the middle of Superman, which should offer some neat visuals along with plenty of weightlessness. With all that out of the way, let's delve into the list. Number 10, Roadrunner Roller Coaster. This is an extended Vacoma roller skater with the same layout as Universal's Flight of the Hippogriff. This one is plus by some audio and the rock statues who whiz past. The layout isn't too crazy, but the initial helix is a pinch of power in the back, and this is a comfortable junior coaster even for adults. Number 9, the Scoob 4D Experience. This is your basic 4D theater. How much you enjoy it depends on your thoughts on the IP used. The film is decent, but I do prefer the older Scooby-Doo's I grew up with. Number 8, Batman Legacy. This is a must for superhero fans. This walkthrough features costumes and props from all the live-action Batman films since the late 1980s. It was surreal seeing all these in person, and each film had a handful of items, some quite large too. It was neat to see the evolution of the Batsuit and Batmobile. The only downside that it triggered my Batman Robin PTSD, but at least that film was so bad it ultimately led to the Fantastic Dark Knight trilogy, so it's not all bad. Number 7. Junior Driving School You may be surprised to find this ride on this list, but hear me out. First off, adults are permitted to ride this even without a child. Usually, these rides are restricted to just kids. Second and more importantly, this ride is shockingly well themed. It's indoors and you ride through a stylized recreation of the park. You have these murals on the wall, and more impressively, large figures you drive under and past. I was in awe at how much effort went into a ride primarily for children. The ride itself feels like a slow-moving go-kart track, which is fine because you have plenty of time to take in the sights. And as a bonus, it helped an American like me get used to driving on the left side of the road. Number 6. Hollywood Stunt Driver 2 This is a solid stunt show. It covers the technical aspect of filming a car chase, and I love the sections that have multiple cars interacting with each other. It really is impressive what these stunt drivers can do. Number 5. Justice League 3D The Ride This Sally Dark Ride replaced the Batman Simulator. I heard the former was quite good, but I do like the shooting Dark Ride that can be experienced today. 
It has a nice mix of physical props and screens. Now, quite a few targets were not working for me, but there were plenty to take aim at. And even when I couldn't accrue points, I still had a fun time seeing all the famous heroes and the zany villain Star of the Destroyer, aka the Starfish with mind control powers. I think I prefer the Battle for Metropolis Dark Rides at the Six Flags parks, but this one is different in a good way, and it's another solid use of the DC characters. Number 4, Green Lantern. This is an SNSL loco that's nearly identical to Steel Hog at Indiana Beach. The big change here is that Green Lantern has lap bar restraints. This is a welcome change because it makes the already robust hang time even freakier. You hang upside down for seconds at a time on that dive loop, and also on the downwards barrel roll. You also have that signature beyond vertical drop at the start. The brake does mitigate those negative Gs, but you'll still get a delayed, albeit brief burst of airtime. The overall pacing of the coaster is wonky with all the brake runs, but you at least get a few airtime pops and laterals in between all those slowdowns. Number 3, Wild West Falls. This is one of the best log flumes out there. It's big, well themed, and refreshing. It's very similar to Rio Bravo at Parque Warner Madrid. There are three changes though. First, this one is a Hopkins Super Flume as opposed to an Intamin creation. Second, this one is less extreme. You don't have that vicious airtime pop that tries to throw you from the boat. That being said, you do have a fun backwards drop still, with a little airtime afterwards. And the climactic 7 story final plunges fast, and also pops you a little out of your seat. Third, this one has superior theming. The mountain facade looks fantastic. There are show scenes before each drop combining physical props with a movie screen, and the slow moving outdoor bit passes through a western town with several timed effects. It took me a few rides to see everything. Number 2, Superman Escape. This intimate accelerator coast reopened just in time for my trip, and it was a blast. First off, let's talk about the theming. This coaster starts with an extended dark ride section. Metropolis is being hit with an earthquake. You pass shaking lockers, a flood, and crashed police cars. Superman, who is on the back of the train, then promises to push you to safety. This is when the launch starts. It's a hydraulic launch and as expected, it has a very strong kick. This is followed by a giant top hat. You slow down mightily over the apex, but you still get very strong ejector airtime. The resultant pullout and low turn was a grey out moment for me. Then you have two more camelbacks chock full of ejector airtime, and very fast turns before hitting the brakes. Superman's coaster section is brief, but it's still more complete than a lot of other accelerator coasters, which I note in my review. And coming in number one is DC Rivals Hyper Coaster. This mock hyper is truly spectacular. The layout is super diverse. The start and end feature strong ejector airtime. That near vertical twisting drop offers intense negative Gs and laterals. The giant camelback offers several seconds of airtime. And the non-inverting loop is downright ridiculous. The whip is vicious, resulting in a magical combination of airtime and laterals. Then the finale features bunny hills with some powerful ejector airtime as well. The middle section changes things up with a series of twists and turns. I love the low transitions and S hills that offer a delightful combo of airtime and laterals. A few of the turns aren't quite home runs, but so much of this coaster is near perfect. This minor pacing issue is rectified and all the good parts are enhanced if you experience the backwards row. Getting sustained ejector of this magnitude in reverse is truly special. It feels like you're being forcibly yanked backwards by a lasso. I loved it. See my review for more but this coaster needs to be on every enthusiast's bucket list. So those are the top 10 rides and attractions at Warner Brothers Movie World in Australia. I don't see the top 2 being dethroned anytime soon, but I suspect the middle spots will change mightily in the future between rides reopening from refurbishments and the new Wizard of Oz area opening. What are your favorite rides at this park? Let me know your thoughts on any of the rides I mentioned, or any I missed down in the comments. If you enjoyed this countdown, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.